on yourself, cropped yeah. from the big frame. Yeah. Okay, mm. cool. Very clever. Um, thanks, Mr. Parrot, for accepting my interview. Yeah. And I believe your views would certainly help uh, clear the mist in the air. Uh, that's why I want to have this interview. I'm not a journalist, uh, but I would like to do this to help the community, the Chinese community especially. No, I'm happy to work with you, Gangway, and I, I understand that this is a time of great fear. Yeah. And um, people don't understand all the information, and there, is, there are lies, there is false information, misinformation. Exactly. Uh, and unfortunately, um, when there is fear in the land, people try to exploit that fear, and that particularly the racists who live amongst us will try to exploit that fear, um, sometimes deliberately and sometimes um, just by chance. So that's why I'm happy to be a part of um, providing as much information as possible. Yeah. I guess the bigger background is the pandemic um, all over the world at the moment. And, yeah. Uh, that's overwhelming. And uh, during this period of time, because of the pandemic, there, are, there is friction between China and the Western countries um, with regard to uh, where it's originated and how to deal with it, etc. and etc. And uh, this uh, increased concerns uh, in Western society uh, about this. And on top of this, I noticed that uh, uh, there are other things ac actually having increasing effects in the society, such as uh, the Chinese uh, enterprise uh, acquiring assets in Australia, and uh, there's an increased concern about that, and maybe other things. So all of these things add together, it does create some sort of a mood, which is uh, yeah. uh, not very healthy, at least to some Chinese uh, community. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so my qu first question, I, I guess, is. Uh, what is the current Australia-China relationship? Is it getting tense? Uh, look, I, I think connecting um, the flu, the, the, sorry, COVID-19 with China um, is, is about facts. Con but connecting um, COVID-19 with China as if there is any responsibility is not in anyone's interest. Uh, the Spanish flu of 1919, uh, we, we call it the Spanish flu because of its historical origin, but we don't associate it with the Spanish people or anything like that. Mm. And likewise, uh, same as COVID-19, it just happened to start in Wuhan, uh, um, in the uh, Hubei province. It doesn't have any particular connection with the people there at all. Uh, and I don't think it's in anyone's interest to um, ignore our great history of, um, of uh, Chinese people coming to Australia, Chinese people calling Australia home. I and mean, the first Chinese person set foot in Australia in 1818, yeah. 202 years yeah. ago. You did a lot of a fantastic job in uh, discovering those his history. Well, they're, they're a story that aren't, uh, that's not always told. Sometimes people like to focus on the sort of the Anglo-Saxon, the white Australian story, but really um, we need to recognize we've had a strong history with China. Now, modern day China is obviously our number one trading partner. Uh, um, we, we, it is a great source of income for Australia because we sell our, our coal from Queensland, our iron ore, uh, and obviously our education services and other commodities to China. So that has taken a hit lately, uh, and that's in the context of global demand slowing down as people uh, retreat to their villages, retreat to their homes. Uh, so I think we will continue to have a strong connection with, uh, with China with the, and with the Chinese diaspora, whether, whether the, wherever they might be, whether it be in Singapore, uh, one of our great trading nations as well, uh, in Taiwan, uh, all, all around the world, we know that the, the Chinese diaspora uh, have uh, been scattered far and wide around the world um, because they've, they've taken the, had the courage to get on ships, to get on planes, to go and start new 
enterprises all around the world. Yeah. In terms of the relationship, because people keep thinking that the relationship between China and Australia will affect the uh, well-being of Chinese community in Australia, um, I tend to separate these two things, um, but there is concern there. So in terms of the relationship, uh, let's just put a scale there from zero to ten, ten being perfect and zero being totally cut off, you know. Yeah. Um, what would you say now at the moment? Uh, well, the, the, um, be, because the pandemic has its origins in um, um, Wuhan province, um, Australia took steps to stop people that might be infected coming to Australia. But we would have done, I would like to think we would do that whether they come from the United States, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Canada, wherever. Yeah. Uh, we, a disease uh, doesn't care about the race that is carrying it or the, exactly. the country, the nationality, the flag yeah. that associated with it. So we made decisions there. And uh, initially, um, I think that has been um, it might have been a little bit slow, but perhaps it has been effective. When you look at the the curve, the increase, we are seeing that Australia, the the spread of the disease of COVID-19 is slowing mm. as we, we take we, we isolation. Are control, we are controlling really well, I guess. Well, yeah. keeping our distance <laughs> is, is a good thing. Yeah. Um, and keeping our, our work to a minimum, um, that's why I was, I was happy to come here because it, it is a part of making sure my community understands yeah. that we can slow the spread of this. And that is all about meaning we'll have enough ICU bed, we'll have enough ventilators, we'll have enough uh, surgical equipment, uh, medical equipment to look after people who are ill rather than being swamped by people that are affected. Many people won't even know that they have the disease. Um, uh, COVID-19, it affects young people in a mild way, many young people, but there'll be people with comorbidities and uh, other fundamental health problems uh, who, who will die if we don't stop the spread of this disease. Yeah. Um, people say that, that the uh, relationship between China and Australia is a bit tense at the moment. Do you agree with that? Look, I think it's been under strain for quite a while. Okay. Um, and um, uh, that doesn't you know, it's like I, I have, um, I'm one of 10 children. Not every one of my brothers or sisters is close to me all the time. Sometimes we have some tensions, but we still have a strong relationship. I think Australia and China still have a strong relationship. Uh, as, as I said, people to people, culturally, socially, economically, we still have a lot to do with China. Um, but I, I think as, as the Middle Kingdom increases its its sway in the world that has created some tensions uh, it has happened in the past uh, but i think australia and china have such a mature relationship with you know over one million people from the the, uh, the with uh, chinese connections uh, as i said some go back 200 years some go back uh, two months uh, lots of australians have connections um, with the the chinese uh, diaspora and you know we will we'll continue have to have a strong relationship but we do have to keep working at it at the moment it is under strain as as all societies are turning insular yeah. are turning in on ourselves yeah uh, so we don't have we don't have chinese um school uh, chinese um, university students coming as much as we would like we don't have um, chinese tourists coming as much as we would like and, and that is um, that Australia will suffer because of that, but I, I think under I think the, um, the I think Beijing understands also that we need to look after uh, the people inside our borders. Yeah, the Middle Kingdom has always done that. They they look after people inside. That that is the yeah the, the you, you maintain the mandate of heaven by looking after your people. Mm -hmm. The Australian government needs to do that. Uh, the Chinese government will do that. Yeah. Different systems, different approaches to um, what what good government is. Mm. But I think we can continue to work together. Um, look, diplomatically, there have been some challenges. I think there has been the odd misstep from perhaps both both governments. But um, 
I think there's such goodwill and such, so many good connections that I think we'll continue to um, rebuild and rekindle the, that strong friendship. Yeah. So the relationship does go up and down from time to time. Yeah. It's, quite, it's quite normal. Uh, it did. Um, um, and there were, there were bad, uh, if you go back to the 18... 1860s, the Treaty of Peking, you know, that, that caused tensions in Australia. Mm. 160 years ago, we actually had riots here mm. in Australia where, yeah. where, um, where Chinese uh, people were, um, were hurt and harmed in, by um, gangs, mobs, uh, doing, doing the wrong thing, being, being, um, um, being racist. So it, it has happened in Australia, but that is 160 years ago. Mostly we are... Uh, there will be the odd racist who does something stupid, but most of society will say, "No, nah, mate, we're in Australia. We don't do that. We we uh, we, we we love uh, every, every. We're a strong multicultural Australia, uh, strong multicultural nation. We're all the stronger for having a mix of people from all around the world." Right. Um, is is it correct for me to say that? Uh those up and down for the relationship, it wouldn't actually affect the Chinese community here in Australia. No, um, my, my main fear would be the rise of racisms, mm -hmm. Race, racists and racism. Um, we saw it with the One Nation political party back in 1996. Yeah. They're still around, still happy to exploit fear and division and miss and um, peddle misinformation to ignorant people. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we do have to be vigilant and we do have to you know, make videos and inform people as much as possible. Yeah. That, that is my main fear, that there will be racists who try to exploit the mm -hmm. fear associated with the coronavirus uh, to create harm and, and division in our society. Yeah. Uh, I am all, but bad people have done that for thousands of years gangway. Mm -hmm. Bad people always exploit fear. They try to create another, someone different from us. Uh, so we, we have to be vigilant and we, we have to make sure we um, do what we can to inform people. Because the, the, those racists, some of them are elected to political office. They are coming. Mm -hmm. They will come again. They came in 1996 and they haven't gone away. They're still, still around cultivating racism and fear and division. Right. So that's actually my next question. Uh, is it possible for the mainstream, main, mainstream society to develop a strong anti-Chinese momentum? Um, when I say mainstream society, that's quite important. It's a, it's a different concept. You know, if we have a few racists and the overall community is against them, that's not a big worry. But if this whole society turns into something, yeah. and that'd be scary. So I don't feel that way, but there are people feeling that look, way. Look, it's, it's, it's right to be vigilant. Yeah. I, I, I agree, with, agree, with, agree with you, Gangway, that there is, that's not the sort of Australia we know, but um, um, you don't have to look too far. You know, if you look at Indonesia in the, in the 50s and 60s, uh, a harmonious society can deteriorate very quickly yeah. when times are tough. And um, I think the uh, Australian society will take a bit of a beating. Uh, we've, we've, we've got a stimulus package being rolled out by the government. Um, so uh, when times are tough, people sometimes look for someone to blame. I, I don't think that it, that would happen here in Australia. Uh, I, I don't think, it, sorry, I don't think it would take place in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. There will always be those fringe elements. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that the uh, right-wing nationalists are a, a power to be reckoned with. Uh, we've heard that from the head, head of the Australian Security and Intelligence Organisation uh, saying that there is a rise of right-wing nationalists, you know, um, uh, extreme right-wing people, mm. uh, people that go into a, a, a mosque in New Zealand and, and kill, murder people. So we, we do have to be wary, we have to be realistic, but I think the police are aware of it. Uh, the Queensland Police in particular are, are, are very uh, well connected into a multicultural community. Um, and I, I think the, um, 
uh, Queensland government, the Australian government would be aware that we need to watch for the rise in racism and um, counter that with facts and information and the things that make Australia great. Mm -hmm. So we don't expect those kind of uh, things, the worst things to happen, do we? I don't expect it, no. but that doesn't mean we don't prepare. We need and to we prepare, prepare by making sure we get information out to uh, through respected sources as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. Uh, because uh, unfortunately with social media, a bad, a, a bad news that is made up can travel very, very quickly on social media. Uh, you see it on WeChat, you see it on Facebook, you see it on Twitter. Yeah. Um, so you do have to be aware that people will spread lies deliberately to create more fear and confusion. Yeah. Um, I guess we are all trying to prevent things to happen. And uh, what you are doing is part of it, obviously. Mm -hmm. And well, at, we... at the moment, my main focus is on... Um, supporting people in terms of food, um, Commonwealth government pensions. Um, but I think in, in the weeks ahead, uh, there will be a more strategic role because I've got to say, uh, Gang Lace, the, the, the one thing about the Chinese diaspora, uh, there are so many strong community groups, you know, from be it in the Taiwanese community, the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, Lots of uh, associations. So, so many associations yeah. that yeah. do good community work, connecting households to the to the greater community. Yeah. Now, a lot of them are on are frozen, mm. uh, are not working. Mm. Um, so, and that has been one of the great strengths of the Chinese diaspora is their commitment to community work, mm. uh, to their commitment to something bigger than themselves. Yeah. So um, that will be something I I, I am. I'm very aware as a federal politician to make sure people stay connected and focused on helping their neighbours, you know, whatever their neighbour is, um, uh, be, especially with those community group activities uh, a little bit frozen at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I guess my focus today is still uh, on those concerns from the Chinese community. If anything happened, we have to face the reality. What would be the worst situation? Uh, look, the um, as, as I said, it's 160 years since um, the town of modern day Yang saw a saw a riot where people were targeting the Chinese community. I can't see that happening at all. Uh, the the our police, so the Queensland Police Service, the Australian Federal Police, are very uh, aware, attuned. Um, they look at social media. They investigate some of these crazy right-wing nationalist groups there. Um, so I, I'm sure that our governments and our police services uh, will make sure that they do the right thing in preventing anything getting out of hand. And that means step stomping on racism when we see it. If we see some racist graffiti, we need to report it to the local government, report it to the state government. Uh, reported to uh, the authorities so that we can stomp on racism when we see it uh, um, and maybe deprive them of oxygen if they are if they are spreading lies and fake news mm -hmm. good thanks for that um, now the mainstream society some people understand you know different uh, uh, groups like Chinese you know they have uh, close relationship like yourself and some other people might not be aware that much and uh, what are the factors affecting their perception to Chinese community as a whole? Well look, one of the, the great ways to combat ignorance is by with information. And one of the great ways people used to interact with the, the Chinese community, well, here in Sunnybank is a great example. People came here to shop, to eat, to and, and you know, to go to the movies, all of those things. And that demystifies so much. So with people being now sort of locked in their own villages, you know, their own suburbs, so to speak, 
um, uh, I think that will be that will be a bit of a problem. Uh, I think we, yeah, and and that perhaps highlights the fact that we don't have enough Chinese faces on Australian television and on our movie screens, and we don't have enough Chinese faces uh, in in our parliaments. Mm -hmm. uh, our parliament and our television should look like us. Mm -hmm. Should look like this, the modern Australia. So that's Everything. perhaps highlights that we do need to have those those reassuring, um, familiar faces and familiar voices out there. Uh, it reminds me that we do need to make sure that there are more uh, people from the Chinese diaspora involved in politics. I'd always encourage people to join the Labor Party, of course, but I'm a bit biased. Right. <laughs> okay, it's interesting to hear things, you know, from your perspective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I nearly ran over my question. The last one is, uh, what would you say to the Chinese community, especially those who may not uh, fully understand Australia, um, you know, your advice, etc., you know, what we can do to improve the situation and to make people uh, understood? Yeah, I, I think First off, find reliable sources of information, and I, 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 I think you are a part of that. So people need to, because you can easily find um, uh, misinformation. I know on WeChat it takes off, on online it takes off very, very quickly, mm -hmm. people giving misinformation. I see it on my Facebook. Um, I have questions from my own family. So find um, reliable source of information, um, be it friends or family or neighbours, uh, and um, obviously the ABC uh, mainstream media uh, should present information that is uh, able to be trusted, believed. And the other thing is um, try to help your neighbours. That's what makes a good community, mm. uh, helping your neighbours where possible. Yeah. Um, I know that it's hard because we're constricted, but if we look after our neighbours, what, whatever our neighbour, wherever they come from, if we look after our street and the like, I think that will make for a stronger Australia. Uh, and um, that, that's a pretty good start. I have faith in our systems. We, mm. we have strong, uh, we're a strong democracy. We um, had uh, a council election last weekend. We got through that okay. Um, we, we've got a strong state government, a strong federal government a federal system that, um, you know, where we have a, uh, Anthony Albanese as leader of the opposition will question what the government is doing. Um, I'm on a, the Human Rights Committee that will look at some of the policies that are being rolled out because obviously they are quite draconian in their way. Um, so we need to hold governments to account, question what they're doing, um, and good governments should not assume that they have every answer. Sometimes they they need to get different points of view. And I look forward to working with the Chinese community for many months ahead uh, as we come through this difficult time of COVID-19. I'm, I'm sure I ask you to stay well. Uh, remember, wash your hands, stay inside, um, and uh, we'll get through this. I know, I know that we can, and we'll be all the stronger for it. Thank you. Xie xie. That's good. Uh, just before we finish, I have another question. Yesterday, a lady asked me, uh, if Australia turns uh, against the Chinese, where should I move? Uh, Taiwan or Singapore? Because I don't want to go back to the mainland of China. And that's the exact question I got. And uh, what would you say to people like this? Obviously, oh, the, are, the, um, the, yeah. the answer to that question is, um, there's nowhere else to go to because this is Australia. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you are Australian. Yeah. You, know, you well, even if whatever your connection to the Middle Kingdom, uh, how, however long it is, this is where we make our home. This is where we belong, and we we need to make sure that we uh, have an Australia where there will never be such a thing happening for the Chinese community, uh, and that's my commitment to the to all of Australians is to make it this a safe place for all of us, a good place for all of us. This is where we belong and uh, we don't run from things here. Uh, we, we know that we've had a racist past. If you talk to any First Nations people, they'll tell you that. 
uh, but we can still make it a stronger, better, fairer country by working on what we have here. Don't don't run, work harder. That's my answer to that lady. Good. I said nearly the similar thing, but not exactly the word. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, no, but we'll yeah. fear, fear, will, fear will scare people. Yeah. You know, like yeah. And some people like to exploit fear. Yeah. The reason I have this urge to do this is because I feel the tense atmosphere around and passing around, yeah. which is not healthy. And, well, and, yeah. and as you know, people are out of work, people are worried about food, they're worried about their business, they're worried about their investment. So, of, of course, uh, they sometimes become act irrationally. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Perrett. Right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Great. Uh, is anyone can help us to take mm. your photo? Just no, no, it's only me here today. I oh, only yourself here. Do, do a um, selfie. Oh, yeah, I just do a... You do it there. Ha <laughs> ha